Welcome to Original vs Reboot, the show where we take reboots and remakes and compare them to their original film. The film of today is Death Wish. Today we've been comparing the 1974 Death Wish to the 2018 Death Wish. The 1974 version of Death Wish is directed by Michael Winner and stars Charles Bronson. The 2018 version was directed by Eli Roth and stars Bruce Willis. Both films are based on the same novel. The novel Death Wish by Brian Garfield which came out in 1972. The stories do vary in some areas but for the most part the story is the same. The story is about a man who becomes a vigilante after his family is taken away from him while he's at work. So the lead character in both films is Paul Kersey. In the original film he's played by Charles Bronson, in the reboot he's played by Bruce Willis. One difference is the main character's job. In the original he's a property developer, in the remake He's a surgeon. The 2018 reboot basically took the same story at the very beginning at least and just modernized it. So in the original, the home invaders, headed up by a very young Jeff Goldblum, get the address for the home invasion from a supermarket delivery. They're in the supermarket causing chaos. They see someone is getting a delivery. They get the address out of the box. In the reboot, it's a valet at a restaurant who gets Bruce Willis's car, uses GPS to get his home address, takes a picture of it and sends it to his buddies. In my opinion, the 2018 version has done a good job of modernizing the old film while still paying respect to the old story for the most part. The use of technology is prevalent throughout, like his first killing is actually videoed and shared across the internet. It goes viral, that's how he gets the name the Grim Reaper. Right away, Bruce Willis is a talking point across his city because of his actions. Now, they don't know it's Bruce Willis because he's just a white man in a hoodie. That's his alter ego, I guess. Which, if you want to be pedantic about it, could be seen as a kind of stupid thing. But then again, Clark Kent gets away with just a pair of glasses. And really, the description of a bald white man in a hoodie could be a plethora of people, so you can see who he could hide from the cops. So personally, from a modernization point, I think they did a really good job with the 2018 version. There is various differences throughout the two films. For example, the home invasion in both films involved Paul Kersey's wife and daughter, but the home invasions are both very different. In the 2018 version, it's almost like a tactical thing because they have all gear on, they're hiding in the house. It's clear they've snuck into the house and they were just trying to rob the place. In the 2018 version, I think the wife and daughter were just lucky with their timing when they came back when the house was being robbed. If they had to come back an hour later, they might not have got caught up in it. In the original film, Jeff Goldblum and his goons disguise themselves as the delivery from the grocery store to break into the house. And it's much more violent. The mother is beaten and the daughter is sexually assaulted. In the Eli Raptors, they don't show the killings. They cut the outside the house. You hear the gunshots, but you don't see who's been shot. They cut to the hospital and you see the mother has been taken into surgery and the daughter is in a coma. In the original, the daughter doesn't go into a coma. She's actually awake and able to go to her mother's funeral. It's explained that she's under doctor's sedation and she's just not herself and she can't snap out of it. Another change is that in the original, Paul Kersey has a son-in-law who weirdly keeps calling him dad. But in the 2018 version, they don't have a son-in-law. Paul Kersey has a brother, I believe. Or maybe it's his brother-in-law. In both films, Paul Kersey becomes a vigilante. But the difference is, he's kind of forced into it in the original film. He's mugged so many times. Give me your money or I'll bust you up. I see the money, man. Come on down and bring us the money, honey. <laughs> Another big difference is that both films are set in different cities. The original is set in New York City and later on he goes to Chicago. And the 2018 reboot is set in Chicago and his daughter later moves to New York. In the original, Charles Bronson never actually goes after the guys who killed his wife. In the 2018 version, it's made very clear that he has a mission. He's gone after the people that cost him his family, which kind of makes more sense. Now, neither film are Oscar worthy. They're not amazing stories. They're not amazing storytelling. But it is an enjoyable film. Both versions are very enjoyable films. Is it Bruce Willis' best work? Maybe not, but for his age, I think he played the role okay. You know, the action isn't over the top. He's not beating up someone and looking like an 80 year old man. And at the same time, he's not beating up like 60 guys at once. And then there's the, the whole daughter storyline, where in the original, the daughter, her storyline is never really finished. Now that may be because there is sequels to this film. 
So I'm not comparing the other sequels to the 2018 version. We're just talking about a standalone films. In the original, the daughter is kind of just faded out. It's established that she's been put in a mental home, basically. Whereas in the Eli Roth version, she does have a full story arc. She gets out of her coma, discovers her mother has been killed. That's a whole scene in itself. And ultimately, they try to pick up their lives. She begins studying for college again, and at the end, she actually does go to college. Overall, pacing-wise, I did think that the second film was actually a bit better. Just because the first one was a bit slower at areas, there was a lot I didn't need. The 2018 version, they kind of just get through the story points. There's no messing around. He does what he needs to do, and ultimately, he gets to his end goal. In both films, there's a police officer, but the weird thing is, in the original one, they basically have the whole police force looking for Charles Bronson. In the 2018 version, Dean Norris and his partner are the only two looking for the Grim Reaper. In both films, the police officer figures out who the killer is, who the vigilante is, but he's kind of doing such a good service for the city, they don't want to get rid of him, they don't want to arrest him. In the original, he's told to get out of town. In the 2018 reboot, Dean Norris has a conversation with him at the end. He basically tells him that he's not going to do it again, and that's the end of that. Also, in the 2018 version, there's a second home invasion. After Bruce Willis and his daughter leave the hospital, there's a guy in the elevator who makes it clear that he was one of the guys in on it. Bruce Willis stocks up on his guns again. The bad guys do come back, but he hides his daughter in the house and ultimately he takes out the bad guys. One falls down the stairs for a pretty gruesome neck break. Old films, for what they are, I think are pretty enjoyable. I didn't know the 2018 version even existed until just recently. I scrolled through Netflix, I saw Death Wish, I saw Bruce Willis, I took out my phone and said, is that a remake? It said yes. I said, okay, I'll watch it. Wow. But I didn't have any expectations for it, and maybe that served me well, because after watching the film, I really enjoyed the film. It, you know, it's not an Academy Award winner, but it's a pretty okay film. It's nothing special. You know, you've probably seen the story a million times over. It's Batman without the costume and the money and the gadgets. It's a vigilante. But it's a man with a mission getting the job done. And the action, it's not over the top. The pacing's pretty good, in my opinion. And some of the deaths, I think Eli Roth did really well. He used horror background to make something a little bit more unique. The original has a lot of just point and shoot. I did stumble across something weird after watching the 2018 word because I didn't watch any reviews of the film, I didn't read any reviews of the film, I don't care what other people's opinions of the film were before I watched it. But afterwards, I had to look to see, am I imagining things? Was the film good? But I went on online and I read some reviews and I instantly realized critics didn't like it. My audiences did seem to like it. I wrote the it's got 72% audience score, but something like 18% critics score? And then I started reading some of the critics' reviews and seeing some YouTube videos from critics. And I began to notice something. They're all saying the exact same stuff. It's almost as if one person watched the film and then they all just copied each other's homework. Because the opinions are so similar on the 2018 version. No, I'm not standing here saying the 2018 version is amazing. It's one of the best films of all time. I'm simply saying this film seems to have got a bad rap from critics. You know, it's not an amazing film, but it's not a bad film. I think it's an enjoyable film if it's your type of genre. But I think it just goes to show you can't really trust what critics are saying because you don't know if they actually have watched the movie. I say so many of the reviews had the exact same sentences in their reviews. And how can so many people have the exact same opinion on small minor things in a film? It genuinely just seems they just copy each other's work. Or they might have taken a bit here, taken a bit there, so that they didn't have to watch the film to save themselves time. But back to original versus reboot, <laughs> now we have to figure out which is better. And this is a close call, because I think both films are pretty good. Both films are very similar, which makes it very difficult to separate them. But I think I'm gonna give this one to the reboot. The reason I'm giving it to the reboot is because I think the story overall made more sense, rather than just becoming a vigilante, actually having a mission of avenging his family, was a more relatable story. Having his daughter have a fuller story arc, and I think overall the pacing was just a little bit quicker, better, he just got the job done. That's in no way saying that the original isn't a good film. The original is a good film, you should go watch it. It's actually the original that has spawned multiple sequels and even a video game. But if you've seen the 2018 version and you think I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and we'll catch you next time.